This is a single-use paper cup. You probably used one recently for a takeout coffee or cold drink. And then you threw it in the garbage or a blue recycling bin. 600 billion of these cups are manufactured each year, and over 99% go straight to the nearest landfill. But they're made of high-quality fiber. And paper is recyclable, right? So you're probably wondering, why aren't these cups being recycled? The protective cardboard sleeve is usually the only component that is recyclable, because the cups themselves have a thin plastic liner that stops the beverage from leaking on your lap. This creates trouble for pulp mills, where used cups are recycled, because special machinery is required to separate the plastic lining from the paper. That makes recycling old cups more expensive than cutting down trees to make new cups. Sadly, coffee shops and retailers generally buy whatever's cheapest, and the environment pays the price, which ultimately means we all pay. We can't solve this problem unless we make it cheaper to buy recycled cups. Because this isn't actually a recycling problem. It's an economic one. And this is true across the supply chain. Pulp mills won't buy used cups if they can't sell the resulting paper at a profit to cup makers. And waste aggregators, who sort the materials that municipal waste collection systems collect in blue bin programs, don't want used cups if they can't sell them to the pulp mills at a higher price than the cost of sorting and separating them from other waste. The problem is magnified at every point in the cycle. It comes down to this simple truth. Every material that is recyclable has to have someone who wants to purchase it, or it's not recyclable. This is particularly true for paper cups, and it's why billions of them end up in landfills every year. But recent advancements in digital twin and distributed ledger technology can fix this problem by inverting the economics of the recycling industry. And what works for coffee cups could work for plastic bottles and other items that are contaminating our land, air, and water. Let's take a closer look. 100,000 paper cups weigh about one metric ton, and depending on market prices, municipalities can typically sell a ton of cups from their blue box programs to waste aggregators for anywhere between $10 and $60. But when demand is low, they might have to pay as much as $20 per ton just to have them taken away. As you can see, these prices are so low that there's not much incentive for a waste aggregator or a pulp mill to deal with dirty paper cups. But what if we could find a way to pay the pulp mill, and the waste aggregator, and the cup converter, the folks who actually manufacture the cups, one cent each for every cup that actually gets recycled into a new cup? That's $1,000 per ton for each of these players. As you might imagine, they've told us it would be game-changing, and they'd actively be searching for all the used cups they could find to turn them back into new cups for sale. And these recycled cups could be cheaper than cups made of 100% virgin fiber. If all the players in the recycling chain get incentivized to do the right thing, the dynamics of recycling could change overnight. But how could we make this transformation? Great question. Imagine a smart cup with a unique digital identity printed as a QR code on its base at the time of manufacture. Each cup can then be scanned at any time in its life cycle, and information recorded in a decentralized database about its location and status. This data log creates what we call a digital twin of the physical cup, but with a new distributed ledger technology called IOTA. It can also be used to store value too, the cup now has its own digital wallet that it can use to pay rewards to actors that move the cup closer to being turned back into a new cup. So, when you buy your next latte, 25 cents of the purchase price is sent to the digital account of the cup, not to the account of the coffee shop. And the cup can then pay rewards from this balance to everyone who helps it to get recycled. The Cup Crush Machine is at the heart of this solution. Think of it like a reverse vending machine, located in transit stops, shopping malls, office towers, food courts, even in coffee shops. With a regular vending machine, you put money in and get a product out. But with the Cup Crush unit, you put in your used cup after scanning it, and you'll get 10 cents back out. Send the reward to your coffee loyalty card, to your transit card, to the charity of your choice, or a variety of other destinations. 
owning Cup Crush machines will be highly profitable because the Cup will release an additional five cents to the machine's digital wallet for providing this service. And when the machine gets full, the Cup will pay another three cents to an authorized agent to empty the unit, but only when the Cups are delivered to a waste aggregator. The waste aggregators get paid one cent per cup when they deliver bales of cups to pulp mills. And when those bales are turned back into cup stock containing high percentages of recycled fiber, the rewards are released to the pulp mill, the cup converter, and other players who have made it all possible. But what happens to the cups that don't make it back to the pulp mill? We know that even the best designed systems will always operate at a less than 100% efficiency, which is why our Smart Cup is pre-programmed to release its value back to the local municipality where it was sold if it isn't recycled within 30 days. The beauty of this arrangement is that the cups can fund the city's environmental cleanup costs when they end up in the garbage. All cups that end up in local landfills will actually pay the cities for the cost of their disposal and the environmental rehabilitation that is required to deal with the waste. Best of all, the city is the recipient of these value streams without the need to raise taxes because the funds come directly from the cups. Our vision employs the underlying model of extended producer responsibility, where coffee shops and food retailers need to deploy the solutions that ensure that their products do not cause environmental or economic harm to the communities in which they operate. And by employing the right economic incentives at the right places in the circular economy through IOTA, the most technically advanced distributed ledger technology, we can ensure a better future for our citizens and future generations. And that's something we can all drink to.